Yo, what is up YouTube? I'm Blitz5, and in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about Pokemon Go. But more specifically, I'm gonna be critiquing this game and talking about a lot of the issues that I've seen in my hours and hours of playing this game. So I've been playing for about two weeks, and I'm level 22, so I've seen a lot of the issues, the ins and outs of this game. I have a pretty good opinion on it because I spent so much time playing it so far. But I wanna preface this conversation in this video by saying that I think this game is amazing, and it's awesome, and I really love playing it. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, I honestly do think that this is like a game changer for the video game industry and especially in the mobile market. I think a lot of games are going to be going towards this aug augmented reality where you use your phone instead of creating your own reality through a virtual reality device, the phone and the mobile application, the game, can use your actual environment in Google Maps and you can walk around through your camera and play in the real world. So it's like the map is already made, the map being like where you're actually playing, the real world, the level, the video game level is where you live and then you can travel to other places and play around that and you catch Pokemon like in the street. It's amazing. I think it's a total game changer and I, I'm, I'm predicting, I think it's obvious at this point that a lot of other games and gaming companies are going to go in this direction and try to capitalize on the success of Pokemon. But for me, I want Pokemon to be successful and I want this game to last for a long time. Um, so I want to get into what I'm talking about, these issues that I've seen that I think will cause or create a downfall or a decline of interest in the game if they're not approved upon eventually. And obviously, you know, I don't make video games. I'm not an app developer. So who am I to talk? But I am a gamer. I put a lot of time into this. So I just want to share my thoughts and you can take it for what it is with a grain of salt or however you want to, however you want to put it. So as I mentioned, I'm level 22. I've leveled up a lot of Pokemon and spent hours into the game. So let's get into it. There's just... A couple things off the bat that everybody's noticed, and let's just get them out of the way, that the app crashes, there's server issues, all that stuff is temporary. So I think most people, including myself, can kind of rub that off. And I've seen a lot of people online and my friends saying that they would never kind of wait or play a game like this with so many problems unless it was Pokemon Go. So like I've totally turned a blind eye to the server issues and the app not working because I know like they did not expect this game to be the most successful game in history, um, especially in its first two weeks, right? It's the most successful mobile game, I should clarify that, in history, at least what I've read. And it's already past Tinder, it's approaching the user base of Twitter, Nintendo stock valuation up $9 billion in a weekend, I'm sure that will come down. but. There's the other school of thought saying like they should release the app until they're ready to, but eventually you have to, you can't just keep producing an app until it's perfect. You have to put it out. And a lot of these companies and gaming companies and even other companies outside the video game market, they release things and it's kind of like they have a saying that they start flying the airplane and they fix and build the airplane while they're flying. A lot of times companies can't just wait to build the perfect airplane in this analogy and then fly. It costs too much money. It takes too long. Sometimes you just need to launch the plane and build it while you're flying. That's kind of like a business analogy to a lot of things. So I don't mind that kind of stuff. So if you guys can just push that aside, we're going to move on to like the other issues that actually affect the game while you're playing. And some of this stuff is the first issue is the rural Pokemon versus like city level Pokemon, the appearance of Pokemon, like how much, how often they're appearing and popping up. And you see problems where I live in a city, so I don't have any problems, but people who live in rural areas in the suburbs have no Pokemon to catch. And it doesn't really make sense that if you walk through a park in real life, that you're not catching any Pokemon. But if you're in the city streets of Manhattan, there's 10,000 Pokemon in New York City. And I think that there should be a lot of Pokemon in New York City because of the way that the game is and there's more people there. But there should be Pokemon when you walk around in a park in the suburbs too. So that's definitely something I hope they acknowledge. It seems like that's pretty much agreed upon against uh, across all of the users of Pokemon that that needs to be fixed. Uh, so hopefully that's something that they do. Uh, I think, you know, they probably have some kind of equation now where Pokemon appear kind of on a per capita basis. So how many people are living in that town or city? And they just need to kind of change that. And the same is to be said for the Pokestops because those goes off, those go off geocaching locations. Uh, I think most people know this, but this app was piggybacked off a geocaching app uh, that Niantic had made in the past called Ingress. And if you don't know what geocaching is, then go ahead and look that up. I'm not going to explain that here. So, for example, where I live in New York City, there's a million Pokestops, but if you're in the suburbs, there might not be these landmark locations uh, where there are Pokestops. So that also kind of needs to be fixed, but that's a little bit more of a difficult solution or a difficult problem to fix because 
you can just make Pokemon appear everywhere, but they like to have these designated areas for Pokestop. So that's something that's going to be a little bit harder, but maybe they can just designate like in a suburb or less populated area, like a business or a restaurant, like a McDonald's or something. I'm just making it up as a Pokestop to make it like more often or more prevalent in that area. But moving away from the way the game is designed, like the level and how Pokemon appear, leveling up has a huge problem as well. And just the way that you evolve Pokemon and you catch them and the rewards behind them are completely skewed and even how you fight gym. So let's let's just talk with the Pokemon. If you catch a level 10 Magikarp that's flopping on the ground, super easy to catch, you get 100 XP for just the base XP, no special shot bonus or anything like that. And then if a thousand level a thousand Scyther appears and super difficult to catch, and I have to use raspberries to make them more friendly and then use extra Pokeballs and maybe even a Great Ball or an Ultra Ball to catch this Pokemon, you get the same amount of XP, which doesn't make any kind of sense at all. Then on top of that, if you you evolve a rare Pokemon, you get the same amount of XP as evolving a Weedle or a Rattata, which are everywhere. So like everyone has like hundreds of Rattatas that they catch or, or hundreds of candies at least over time if you play for a while. But it's super hard for me to find like a Charmander or a Squirtle or even a Bulbasaur or any of those Pokemon in the starting three. Super hard for me to find. And I've only evolved like one of them. And they give you the same amount of XP. So I think it's pretty clear. Um, I don't know if a lot of people have thought of this. But as soon as you hear someone say that or me now, if you haven't thought about it in the past, that's pretty clear that that needs to be fixed because it's totally skewed. And you should get a lot more points for these higher level, more difficult, more rare Pokemon to catch. And then on top of that, same thing is to be said for the gyms. The whole gym mechanic is completely screwed up because you could fight like five people in a gym and spend like 10 minutes fighting them and your Pokemon are dying, you're having to use revives and potions and all this stuff and you get like 350 XP. So you're telling me that, or the game is telling me that I can catch three Pokemon and get around 350 XP in like you know in my area that is super quick because there's so many pokemon appearing or i can spend all this time and effort fighting a gym having to use all these resources and i get the same amount of xp and there's a chance that i'm going to lose and get zero xp or like a hundred i guess if you or whatever it is i don't know the exact amount for if you only beat a couple people so to me that just doesn't make any sense and then you can spend all this time grinding to beat a gym and somebody walking by can just click on it when it's dead when it's dead the gym becomes white and falls down and i do this all the time i see somebody fighting a gym i'm walking by it falls down i click onto it and make it a yellow gym and as of right now there's really no point into defending your gym if you don't know this when you take a gym you can train against your own Pokemon. So if you put a 800 Pokemon in your gym, 800 CP Pokemon, you can battle him with another Pokemon. So let's say, scenario, I put my 800 Pidgeot into a gym. Then I can take my 1,000 level Pinsir and fight the Pidgeot. And if I win, I actually get more points for my gym. So it's har- they're harder to take. But the points are so low, you only add like 100 points to your gym. And you only get like 30 XP for doing that. And when someone attacks your gym, they take away like thousands of points and they get more XP. So what's the point of me defending my gym when I'm only getting 30 XP and I might not even win when I do it and I'm only getting 100 points on my gym? It just doesn't make any sense at all. So you're better off just fighting a gym than letting people take it and then just fighting it again. So that whole mechanic needs to be changed. But more importantly, I think what's What's affecting more people because I think more people spend time catching Pokemon than fighting at gyms is this whole XP stuff for Pokemon. So that's kind of just the initial stuff to me that needs to be fixed because I think the game is going to get kind of annoying for people doing that and it gets super grindy. I mean, Pokemon by nature is a grinding game, but it needs to make sense and be kind of balanced. And now that I'm level 22 and it takes 100,000 XP to level up, it's super grindy and you need kind of like extra things. And when the game doesn't make sense, when you're grinding, you question why am I grinding if this game doesn't make any sense and it just isn't valuing what I'm doing in the in the right way. But if the game makes sense and you're kind of blind to it all, that's when gamers like myself and pro- possibly you if you're watching this video, you kind of just keep grinding and you get into it and all that stuff. And I should also add before I end the video because I just thought of this, that a lot of the Pokemon are skewed as well because, for example, like you're never going to get a really strong Beedrill because all the Weedles... So Weedle evolves into Kakuna and then into Beedrill, right? But the Weedles are so low and their evolution rate is so shitty 
that if you have like a 200 Weedle, it just goes into like a 250 Kakuna and then like a 350 Beedrill. So you're never going to be able to use that Pokemon. Like it has no viability in the game. But if you get like a, an Eevee or whatever, yeah, like an Eevee, if you have like a 400 Eevee, it evolves into like 1100 Vaporeon because the evolution multiplier is so big. And I was mentioning this in my previous video. So you'll see that the owners, the Pokemons on the top of all the gyms are like the same Pokemon. You see like Gyarados. You see Snorlax, which usually you find pretty rare. I mean, pretty high up if you get it in like an egg or I don't know. I guess people are catching them high up. Executor. Um, I'm kind of blanking right now. But you see a lot of the same Pokemon. You'll, you'll see them all. I, around me, I always see Executor, Gyarados, Golduck. And all these Pokemon have really good evolution rates. And all the Eevee ev ev evolutions like Vaporeon and Jolteon. Uh, so they need to fix that because right now there's just no point in powering up or really keeping these other Pokemon that are never going to be to that level that have really low evolution rates. So I think you guys get that. I'm going to quit rambling on, but hopefully they kind of fix this stuff because they really made a big splash with this game and they have a bunch of people playing it, but I've already seen a huge decline even within my friends and people at work and people in the city when there used to be like hundreds of people outside at night collecting Pokemon in the park. Now I'm seeing like less and less, like 30 or whatever the amount is. So you can definitely see it already kind of declining, which you expect, but we don't want to lose the major gamers playing this game and then the game eventually becoming like nothing. And finally, before I end it, it'll be interesting to see what Nintendo does because they have to plan for the regular Nintendo Pokemon games on like DS or whatever, and then Pokemon Go. So they don't want it to cannibalize itself and have people that are playing Pokemon Go don't get the DS game and vice versa. So I don't know how they're gonna balance that out in the future, but we'll see. This is a free to play game, so it's kind of a different market. But anyways, um, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think. If you agree with me, if you disagree, if there's anything that I missed, I'm sure there's plenty of stuff that I missed. This is just stuff that's been on my brain I wanted to make a video about. So as always, thank you for watching. I'm Blitz5 and peace out.